Slow the spread until we find the cure. Keep us safe, baby, as a hope and news. It takes a clear and pure focus just to bring us through. We will come together, keep it practical and true. Before you put on your mask, ask yourself a question. What will it take? What will it take to keep us safe? To get back to normal? Good evening, everyone. We're so happy to be here and with this kind and loving and inspiring San Antonio Poet Laureate, um, Andrea Vocab Sanderson. And that's who you just saw in that video. Um, first, I wanna thank everyone here for supporting Nowcast Essays nonprofit newsroom in these really difficult times. Never has our trustworthy journalism been more important and more in demand. Here's how it's gonna to work tonight. For most of the evening, the only people on screen will be me and Andrea. Your video and audio are off by default, I think. Um, I encourage you to put questions in the chat and we'll recognize you during the Q&A period. If you'd like to come on screen and pose your questions, you are welcome to, um, but you're not required to. We will also, um, uh, at the very end, um, give away five of Andrea's books. And remember, it's virtual, so I won't hand you the book tonight. First, they will go to Andrea to be signed and then they will be shipped and reindeer willing, you may receive them by the 12th day of Christmas. Now for some shout outs um, to others in this room, I'm going to take a point of personal privilege and first recognize my mother, Holly, the librarian who read poetry to us as children and launched my lifelong love affair with words. I also wanna recognize members of the Nowcast Essay Board of Directors, Chairman Chuck Andrews, Crystal Darby, Tracy Grooms and Francis Gonzalez. And we are also delighted to have with us State Senator Ina Minjares, State Representative Barbara Hawkins, former City Councilwoman Maria Boryazabal, and we're expecting another special visitor at about 20 after. So let's start at the beginning. Andrea, you're San Antonio's fifth Poet Laureate. What does it mean to be Poet Laureate? What's your job? My job is to inspire everyone to write, to read, and to celebrate poetry and all things literary. And it's a pleasure to do so. In a year when many of us um, are just glad to still be standing, you set the bar for firsts. This year, you published your first book, which we'll be giving away later. Um, and you released an album, you were named Poet Laureate, and you gave a TEDx talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's truly um, a remarkable achievement. Let me um, go to the absolutely amazing TEDx talk, which um, uh, started uh, with Andrea singing, um, included storytelling, and, and um, in, in this part concludes with a poem. Go ahead, Susan, the, the TEDx number two video. Do you recall how you felt when the pandemic started? Could you describe it in three words? I felt constricted, uncertain, and fearful. Anthony Mara, the author of The Czar of Love and Techno wrote, a single whisper can be quite a disturbance when the rest of the audience is silent. Coming into quarantine, the world hushed as we vacated the streets and went inside. The stir-crazy set in, coupled with rising racial tensions from the killings of Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and Breonna Taylor. Overall, it's been an intensely difficult season. Breaking ground as the first Black Poet Laureate of San Antonio put me under a microscope. I was constantly asked to create programming that spoke to social justice issues for marginalized groups. I was in a critical position to act as a bridge between diverse demographics of people. Using my voice in poetry was a tool to connect the dots between us. Creativity builds the confidence to speak up. 
I decided to be a single whisper in an audience of silence because frankly, I was tired of feeling hopeless. Hashtags on social media are used for entertainment trends. They can act as a voice of protest and also help organize positive movements. So I created the hashtag my tongue is challenge. My instructions for the challenge were this. Use the sentence starter hashtag my tongue is as the first line of a poem, then write a short one to four line poem design a digital poster of it and post it on social media. Use the hashtag, my tongue is challenge. I received over 200 posters worldwide from poets as far away as Australia. Now my poem was a little longer than four lines and I have an excerpt for you. My tongue is a box cutter in a bodega breaking down cardboard stereotypes. My tongue, a bald eagle perched before flight that just spotted a serpent in the sand. My tongue, much like your tongue, has the power to bless or curse this land. An earthquake tremor reverberating through tectonic plates, sending shivers through Sierra-tinged soil and concrete alike. It interlocks with la tierra forcibly, causing a cessation of mantle. My tongue lights the candle. My tongue lights the candle of intercession that brings healing to our nations. This tongue calls out proclamations, irrigates water into thirsty reservations, turning them into reservoirs, summons manna to end starvation. I fill hungry mouths with heavenly bread. I speak to break the silence for those who have bled from domestic violence and human trafficking in the shadows of deprivation. I speak to the innermost parts of the heart where desires form and take root. My tongue is a tambourine of testimonies, quivering utterances of truth, utterances of truth. That's truly amazing. Thank you. Andrea, can you talk more about coming into this position as San Antonio's first black woman poet laureate with the Black Lives Matter movement taking off all over the world, including on the streets of San Antonio? And I, I have to say, I'm, I, it's, it's personal for you too. I mean, this, this Vanity Fair cover of Brianna Taylor, she's wearing the same blue you were wearing in that TEDx talk, you know? I mean, yeah. Wow. And you know what? I, I told myself, I was like, I got to go find that Vanity Fair. And do you know, I asked this nurse, sh shout out to Nurse Yolanda at my job. I was like, hey, Nurse Yolanda, I'm about to do, uh, I'm going to do a vision board party um, at the end of the month. And I was wondering, do you have, because she always would come and bring me stacks of magazines. And at the top of that stack of magazines, because she, she came the next day with a stack of magazines for me after I asked her for them the very first magazine was that Vanity Fair one. So God literally answered my prayer within, you know, a couple of days of you showing me uh, that magazine. So I was really grateful that I got it. Um, it, it was extremely difficult. Um, I have to thank a friend of mine. His name is uh, Ricardo Espinosa. Ricardo uh, came to me because he was like, you know, you've really been inspiring me the past few years with some of the work you've been doing and I want to start an organization um, that will speak to everything that's happening uh, in society right now because at that time George had just been killed George Floyd had just been killed and they were airing the video and people were just talking about everything that was happening with that and you could just feel the tension rising and stuff right after we were coming into the season and he was like, I want to start an organization. Um, he's, he's a universalist, uh, unitarian. He's a unitarian universalist, or other way around. And my um, people, my people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and you know that 
that their congreg the congregation over there, it is a mixed congregation, but it's predominantly white. Um, and, and they had a Black Lives Matter working group, but they wanted to do a spinoff from that. And so we came together, I came together with him and we started Black Lives and Allies in Community, which is an organization that helps um, grassroots and nonprofits and, and people that are doing the work out there going, so like the Reliable Revolutionaries, um, the Young Black Futures Collective, people of that nature here in the city, we, we started creating events where we could um, raise money and fund their efforts or creating a platform to bring them in. And it's just like constantly people were coming to me and asking me to speak to some of these issues that are going on. But at the same time, you know, I was dealing with the pain and the emotion of watching all of this happen. And it was difficult. Um, it required me to do some sitting uh, when, when everything first started, I, I did a lot of sitting with myself and my thoughts, and I, I couldn't write at first, per se. I couldn't write anything long. I could do short stuff, and during that time is when I created that hashtag, the My Tongue Is hashtag, and um, started getting into Canva, and I was like, let me try my hand at the digital world. I've never been able to make flyers, you would think, after I started cr like throwing shows and creating programming in 2006, and all that time, I never really tried to learn how to make flyers really well but i was like this this is it i'm, I'm gonna start making my own flyers and making digital poetry posters and just kind of putting them up um so i knew we were gearing up for national poetry month and all of that and so i just wanted to do something anything that i thought could be helpful you know i have to check on something right now there's um uh could um Mayor Nuremberg, if you are in the audience, could you um, change your name on your um, to say Mayor Nuremberg on your iPad? That um, um, there's we're hoping that one of those that says iPad is you, but um, it could also be Jonah, of course, Nuremberg. Um, and. Um, Let's talk I mean, about one more part of this, Andrea, and that is that people are expecting you to know the answers on this because it is about Black Lives Matter. It is about this movement and you are a black woman who has just been put in this position and it's kind of like, okay, tell us what to do. Where, right. You know? <laughs> I, I felt that, that uh, when, whenever something happens, we want people who either we see a lot in the media or, or public figures, we want them to have something to say. We want to know their opinion. And the way the world is now with social media, you can directly have conversations with people. There's not any really degrees of separation between you and other people. You can speak to them directly and you can also real time get the reaction, but real time, I'm dealing with my emotions. <laughs> I'm hurting and I'm trying either to avoid seeing the footage. I still have not watched the, that video in its, in its entirety. I can't do it to myself. I simply can't. I've seen portions of it, but, but anytime um, brutality has happened or in, injustice has happened against people, I, I can't watch those types of videos, you know, the fight videos or the people being shot, really can't watch those. I, I've never been able to do it. I feel that I'm an empath and I just take it in and it, and where I, where I like to stay is try to stay in a positive headspace and a clear headspace, because if I'm thinking clearly, then I can walk in love. And sometimes you don't want to walk in love. Sometimes you don't want to be patient. Sometimes you don't want to, um, you know, I have a very good friend. My, I have a good friend. His name is Zach. Um, he was a guy that was drumming in that in that uh, oh, footage of me. I was going to ask who that was. Yeah. Yes, his, his name is, is Zach Jewell. Um, and a lot of times when things happen in society that involve um, hatred or crime towards Black people done possibly by white people or they could be charged in, the, in that situation, he wants to come talk to me about it. He wants to tell me how he feels and hear how I feel. And sometimes I'm like, Zach, I can't have this conversation right now, friend. I know you want to have this conversation, especially with someone that's black, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, but sometimes I, I couldn't do it. And this year I finally said, I'm not going to shy away from those tough conversations anymore. I'm going to get in there and have those conversations. And it's, it's going to be an act of patience. It's going to be an act of, of grace 
because that's what really society needs. We need to have more grace with each other. And um, I'm going to hear and listen, and I'm also going to speak, and I'm, I'm not going to bite my tongue, you know, and it, it, it'll get uncomfortable. But we, if we truly love each other and we're truly in this to come to a better place and, and a place of understanding, then no matter how uncomfortable it gets, we will find a way through that darkness um, to the other side, you know. Wow. I just want to absorb that for a minute. Wow. Let me ask you, because you're, you're giving us all so much here. We, many of us have, um, can recall a person who made a huge impact on our lives when, when we were adolescents, right? Mm -hmm. um, for you, I think there was a middle school art teacher who taught you how to breathe and to focus, right? Yeah, Linda Bowling. <laughs> um, and but for but what many people don't know about you is that you know you're doing all these other things, and at the same time as you're doing your night job, right? right. So for this generation of young people who have passed through the Bear County Juvenile Detention Center, that person has been you. Um, talk to me about how you help those young people. I think well, the, the phrase is detangle feelings and pour them into words is what I saw. Well, when I am hired by Gemini Inc., which if you, if you are in, in the listening vicinity and you don't know who Gemini Inc. is, they are a, a nonprofit literary organization that help people tell their human stories and their narratives. They offer workshops. They have send teaching artists out into the community, and then they provide programming and galas and extra, extravaganza and wonderful things. Uh, and Sh Charlotte, Charlotte knows uh, Gemini Inc. very well. Um, they've been in partnership and, and Gemini Inc's been in partnership with a lot of corporations yeah. and entities here in San Antonio, but they're also one of my employers in addition to Juvenile Detention Center, which I've been at 18 years and one month. Wow. So um, I started like November 2002, I think. But uh, anyways, so where was I going? Oh yeah, How do you so they the hire kids? me. Yeah, <laughs> so they hire me. The first thing I usually do after I, I sit down to create my curriculum, you know, and then I go into the, the, the facility and usually the first thing I do is sing, much like I did in that video. I sing um, and I rap to them and that usually breaks down the walls because, you know, what I call human currency, which is when you come into a setting and someone's there, they approach you to perform or speak to you, the offering that you have to them is your attention. You, you pay them attention. And it's literally something that costs you because your time is valuable. You pay them attention. I need to take your attention, convert it into some energy and shoot it back to you and with my performance. If I'm up there just sounding like a robot and talking like this, you know, you're not gonna get anything out of it and I'm not gonna get anything out of it. So I, it's, I'm tasked with engaging you. And I, I engage by giving some of my spark and some of my energy back with the singing or the poetry and the rhyme and the rhythm. And can, we all have a rhythm to us. Our, uh, nature has a rhythm, which I talk about in one of my other poems. There's a vibration to it. 432 megahertz is the, the tuning of vibration of, of nature. And we, since we all have these frequencies, you know, we're giving our frequencies to each other. And there's some people you vibe with their frequency very well, you know, whatever they're, whatever they're buzzing with on the inside. I don't know that's it's science, right? But, you know, somewhere in there, some magic happens, some spirit happens, and the kids just, they, they light up. And then I kind of issue a challenge. I single certain people out and notice things because kids just want to be noticed. Everybody wants to be noticed, right? So... I notice them, I speak directly to them and somewhere in there I challenge something within them. And then next thing you know, the kids that didn't wanna speak, didn't wanna write, didn't wanna talk to me, had their arms folded, they're engaged, they're in it. And then they get up and they start sharing their own stuff. And it just, you try to create that safe space um, with, with, with people when you engage them. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Well, we, we have been joined by a, um, uh, the person who put you in your poet laureate position. <laughs> Mayor Nuremberg, thank you so much.
for stepping I back. I see. <laughs> hey, uh, vocab. Hey, Andrea. It's good to hey, see you. Hey, so great to see I, you. <laughs> I, I wish I could take credit for um, uh, how um, vocab is is now the voice of of San Antonio, um, but she earned it on her own, and it was on me to recognize that, I suppose. But uh, I'm so proud of of her career and. Uh, from the moment I first heard her recite her poetry, I, I mean, it was it was um, it was incredible. It was otherworldly, and and I think it was the first time we met was at the mayor's ball uh, many years ago. You were um, very moving experience. At any rate, thank you for having me, CA. I know we're here to celebrate Nowcast and talk about the importance of of nonprofit civic journalism, which um, is a passion of mine. So. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, thank you for thank you for for supporting us um, in so many different ways, and 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 your timing on on putting her in that position was pretty much impeccable. I mean, <laughs> I mean she everything, is, I guess. Huh? <laughs> she is she is exactly who we need now, um, and I think that's that's um, you did right. <laughs> well, you know, I I I happen to believe that. Um, People don't pick moments, moments pick people, and, and uh, vocab is here uh, at the right place at the right time for our community, and, and um, good on the city of San Antonio, uh, our community here, for recognizing what an incredible international talent we have here in San Antonio, and in a, in a, uh, one of, a, of a, a growing list of international uh, talented artists here in San Antonio uh, but okay. at the moment that she is being recognized with all the different intersections of challenge that are going on in our in our world right now, um, I can't think of a more appropriate voice uh, to represent the future. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. I, um, it, 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 the the next thing we were going to show was was um, um, the how she painted a poem on a city street. I mean, talk about the, and with the support of the city, I mean, with the support of Centro. Um, and I, I don't know that other cities had quite that kind of support behind them when people were painting large yellow letters on the streets. So this I, is pretty remarkable. I, well, I think maybe they did, um, but I don't think any city um, recognize the authenticity of having a voice on the, the street as we did. I mean, this is not what, what was painted on the street in San Antonio was unlike anything you saw anywhere else in the country, um, but was of the same um, spirit and, um, and movement, but it was an authentic voice. And I don't know if you, if you get that other places. No. I think that's one of the magical parts of San Antonio is that uh, the authenticity here is is um, constant. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like you're in outer space, CA. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sort of disembodied, you know. <laughs> She's floating right. ethereally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I want to I wanna also compliment you and, and um, the team at Nowcast. Uh, I, I don't even know how many know how, I don't even know how many years now, but uh, the okay. importance of nonprofit journalism and uh, it's uh, at a time when um, journalism and media and the press are under attack, uh, having having a a, a source of um, journalism that is purely. Uh, by and from the people of our community is, is so incredibly important. And, and, and I want to thank you for your persistence because I know it's not easy. Thank you for also you. sticking cameras where normally um, they don't, they don't, they aren't always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I'm, I'm glad that, um, that, I mean, one of the, the parts of this pandemic has been that the city has now is now live streaming everything. So it's not necessary for us to be at all of those blessed planning and zoning meetings until all hours in the morning. So I'm really glad that that we could we could also um, pick our pick some other moments. Yeah, but now. you you were do, you were doing it before the pandemic, my darling. You were doing it. You were you set the pace. That's right. 
I'm I'm glad that you got at the city's the city's picking up now. <laughs> there, there's a, there's a a level of purity I think that journalism aspires to that's seldom mm -hmm. achieved when you have corporations and advertising and all that stuff. It's just not possible. Uh, but you're able to to uh, provide that uh, purity that I think other journalism and outlets aspire to, and I think it's important that you remain present um, in that way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this this year, the the thing that we've done that I consider the, our most important thing was when schools were closed um, because of COVID, and so many children, ninety four percent of the kids in SAISD are eligible for free lunch. So many children um, depended on schools for their meals. Um, we put together a map of three hundred and nineteen different locations where kids could pick up free meals when schools were closed, and we had the capacity to do that. And I'm very glad we did. So yeah. that's, that's this year. So, so I hope, uh, I'd, I'd love to know your sense of um, the future um, and your level of relative optimism about 2021 and beyond. Mine, <laughs> I'll tell yeah. you mine. I mean, I'm, I'm, my level of optimism is great because of the level of engagement that we saw in the election when I saw so many people and I saw so many young people, so many young people come out in such extraordinary numbers that gives me great hope. It, that the, the very young, I mean, you know, 29 and under crowd is making me have great hope for the future. I mean, I, I, I was one of them once and, um, <laughs> You kind of still are. We, we raised a little hell. <laughs> yeah. And um, and I'm hoping that that like I was when I was their age, that they vote in every single election from here to kingdom come. <laughs> and yeah. then it's going to be OK. <laughs> it was wow. it was I mean, that's in our mission statement, civic engagement. And and, you know, <laughs> Annenberg Center um, is at your core as well. Um, <clears throat> but but if they stay engaged, then we're good. Yeah. And well, uh... <laughs> do you think? Absolutely. I, I put up several posts during that time. And I think really it's about being present in general. Um, it, you have to learn, even in this season where we feel extremely disconnected from each other, to be present, to um, not zone out. And when you have devices, this makes you zone out a lot of times and you have to tap in, check on people, physically call, physically, you know, show up as much as you can think about, can I, can I zoom? Can I have a meeting where I'm zooming somebody or should I talk to them on, talk to them on the phone? Do I, should I just text, you know, like show up for each other. And we had a lot of time to just sit and look and observe and nothing to distract us from these observations. And so that it puts it directly in your lap. It puts the, puts the, um, the responsibility back in our, in, our, in our lap to do. And I feel like in a city like San Antonio, we have some great leadership. You didn't, ever, to say that this man gets on television night by night and lets you know the statistics, the numbers, where we are, where we stand, to know that when there are drive-by and drive-through centers where you can pick up supplies, our mayor is out there handing those supplies out. He's not sitting at home with his legs up, chilling, like you're literally out there with us. You roll up your sleeves and you do the work. And when you have that type of leadership, then we're a city of workers. The city has always been a city of working people and, and um, knowing that it takes the blood, sweat and tears and that something that can affects a small portion of us affects all of us. It, and it's really great to, to see that we've, we've stood up together, we've come together and we've done those things. It's so important that you and Judge Wolf are there every single night taking questions on the fly. Nobody's, there's, I've sent in questions. I know the questions just go through. <laughs> even even sometimes if you've already answered the questions, but I mean taking those questions that's not that's that's exceptional in this country, and um, that's that stands out to all of us. And it also I think 
gives people a sense of a better reason to trust their government when yeah. it's just completely transparent. Thank you, CA. Well, you know, my I have the heart of a journalist because that was my dream job growing up. So uh, <laughs> transparency is something I, 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 I aspire to. And I think it's, it's probably um, uh, the currency of public trust at this point. So um, we, we still have a lot of work to do. But I think in San Antonio, we're doing a little bit better than most. I think, yeah, I think it's about to, to come in with this transparency conversation. Two things that I that I kind of keep in my heart at all times is that um, knowing that I came into this position, I think of it. And, and if you're not a Christian, I don't say this to offend anyone here. But when I think of Christ, he came to the earth knowing that he was a servant. And when I came into this position, I said, I'm coming to serve. And I didn't even want to try to apply to be poet laureate. I didn't want people to really recommend me because I still had to finish. I'm still working at juvenile right now. And so I was like, mm, should I try to do it? Because I have a full-time job and I want to be able to dedicate as many hours as I can to this poet laureate thing. Um, but it's like, Mayor Nuremberg understands that he's a he's a public he's here to serve. Um, I know that I'm here to serve, and many other our council people they know that that's what they are. They're servants, and we yes we have to draw boundaries, healthy boundaries, so that we can have balance and not go crazy. But ultimately, that's what we need to do. We need to think about what are the needs of our community, assess that accurately, and then come up with a strategy and then execute. You know, and I think that I that is that is also what the best journalists do is yeah is to serve the people in in the community i mean it's not about <clears throat> it's about me behind the camera most of the time <laughs> well, serving giving people what they need yeah and, and life is a series of inflection points and and this is certainly one um i always i always think about the the um the quote that is most often attributed to, to uh, Dr. Martin Luther King about the moral universe, the arc of the moral universe is, is long, but it's bent towards justice. Um, and it is, uh, it is the people of the community that live through these moments that do the bending of that arc. And so let us all be those that bend the arc. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for putting that overlay on today. That is so important. Thank you. Well, I'm honored to join you. Um, I have some good news, um, family good news, and that is uh, my nephew who enlisted in the Marines literally uh, two weeks before the pandemic started, uh, surprised us with a trip home. <laughs> and so he's here right now. Oh, wow. um, so um, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to have fellowship with you guys for a little bit. Um, I'm going to go. Um, see him before he heads off and, Absolutely. and um, my love to you all. Thank you. And, and um, please give, give Erica a hug and I tell, will. tell um, Jonah, I, I missed him at the mayor's summer reading program this year, but I know he'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> he will. He's ready to ham it up at all times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to see you all. Great, Andrew, to, see great you. to see you. Merry Good to Christmas. See you. Thank you. Happy you. holidays. Happy holidays. Bye, Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. That was pretty special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he makes me very proud often. Yeah. Yeah. Humble man. And, you know, my birthday was at the beginning of the month. I woke up to a text from him saying happy birthday. And I was like, man. I didn't think, I didn't realize, you know, when, that's the, one of those moments where I was like, I, I have some impact. I've got the mayor, the mayor is texting me happy birthday. That's, that's crazy. I just like, I just had to lay there for a minute and be like, God is good. <laughs> well, Susan, can you, can you pull up that wonderful video of Andrea's poem? Um, and it is, and it is very different than other cities. As the mayor was saying, other cities, um, many of them had, had you know the important words black lives matter um on the on the street but in san antonio we had andrea's poem on the street
We've been experiencing a series of tensions building up. There aren't enough poster boards or hashtags to comfort us or. Yeah, so. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Um, can you can you talk about the power of art as activism? I mean, that's. Sure. So, you know, we got to figure out what our expression is. We all have an expression. Some of us dance, some of us write, some of us paint, some of us sculpt um, and get an image or a thought or a phrase in your mind. Um, for me, when I came up with jubilant and exuberant is the melanin of our skin from despair, we have arisen. When I came up with that, that came after three days of fasting. I just drank water, I prayed, I reflected, and I asked God, what should I say to my city to let them know that I love them and that we can overcome? Um, to me, uh, the fact that it's a political statement to say that Black people matter is kind of ludicrous. I think trying to tell someone that human beings matter is not a matter of politics. And it shouldn't ever be a medical, it shouldn't be radical. It shouldn't be a revolutionary thought. This is just plain and simple human decency to know that we all matter. And whether you say a black person matters or a Mexican person matters or a, um, a white person matters, whoever you say matters, it's true, we just do. And it shouldn't be argued and it shouldn't be fought against, you know? Uh, and I know that's been said a lot, but I wanted to think about the posturing. Words have powers. You can have a can do, you can have a will do, you could have a should do, you could have a can't do attitude. Uh, and I wanted to put this in the perspective of we've already overcome, we've already ascended, we are already doing good. And everybody minus our, our, our albino friends or melanin deficient friends, all of us have melanin in our skin. So you can see yourself somewhere in this, in this poem if you want to, if your heart is open to it. Um, and that's why I wrote what I wrote, but there's, uh, there's uh, activism within all of us. There's action we can all do, whether it be playing an instrument, singing a song, sculpting something, there's something you can do. Sometimes knocking on your neighbor's door with a basket of food is activism. It's about meeting needs according to your ability. And we have resources at our fingertips. Sometimes all you need to do is make a phone call and you can solve somebody else's problem. Um, or you can get up and physically do it yourself, right? We all ha have our ability to do something. Some of it can be a small act. Some of it is big, like raising thousands of dollars, you know? You know, it, it just, it's just about what we can all do in our own space. And it's challenging during this season when we can't freely walk outside unmasked and go and come as we please, but with a little vig vigilance and a, making a plan, there's something we can do. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, I want to I'm I want to skip to the another thing that I'm very curious about, um, and it's sure. part of part of it is talk to me about the healing power of poetry, but also talk to me about your personal experience with COVID and and how you beat the odds. I mean, talk about healing. Sure. So words have power, um, and we have to believe that. If you don't believe it, I'm sorry, but it's true. <laughs> um, you can create things with the things that you say. You can take away and diminish things with the things you say. And so if we take our intentions of whatever's in our heart and then we find the words that we associate with that, we can create poems or songs or uh, stories, fiction or nonfiction, um, bi autobiographical or not. And we can create, you know, a sequence of things, even when you spell stuff out, there's magic in it. It's why it's called spelling, right? Um, when you cat, you do a broadcast, it's like casting a spell. Literally your words have power, magic life in them. And so we, we I believe that very strongly. I'm convicted it's com something that leads my life, knowing that when I speak, my words have the power to create something. And as long as I keep my heart in a good place and I'm doing good, you know, 
<laughs> so I try to come from a place of love. I talk about it even in that in that TED talk. I talk about love being my center and knowing that I when I create stuff, I'm creating it with that intention. And so, um, you know, I teach other people that when I do creative writing, I'm like, think about what your center is. Think about the message that you're trying to portray. And um, we have a responsibility as writers, as journalists, to use the accurate words to say exactly what we mean. Um, and I have friends that I read my poems to and they help me edit or I edit myself. I say them out loud, see how the words sit with me. Um, and that's what I do to create. And teaching people is really, I, I don't know if you can quantify or really put into words what inspiration is. I mean, they've defined inspiration, you know, Webster's Dictionary, but there's something about it. You can't really put your, wrap your words around what inspiration will do for you. And I, we, some of us have our different gifts and I feel like one of my gifts is insp inspiration and inspiring people. And some of it is having your heart open to receive the inspiration when, when it comes from someone, you know? Yeah. Well, the second part of that was COVID. I mean, you, you, you and you, COVID, COVID uh, came to came you. Came to my doorstep. And, and <laughs> you, you live to keep on singing. Yeah, um, it was crazy because um, the Sunday, there's the Sunday night that I started coughing, the moment I started coughing, I was like, I think I have COVID. Uh, and I went and got tested that following, I, I went to work that night. And then after that night, I did not, but I wasn't coughing really when I went to work. But when I got there, I started coughing because I work overnight. And usually when you go to bed, you would wake up sick, you know, like we've all gone to bed with feeling just about fine and then woke up the next day and the sickness has hit us i'm usually i'm usually awake during those hours when my body should be sleeping and so i'll be awake when the symptoms start hitting me um so anyways the next day i didn't go i didn't go to work um and i got tested on a tuesday it came back negative and i was confused because i was like i know how i feel but my test is negative so um I still didn't really go to work. I went to work for, for four hours on a Thursday. But during that time, that first week, I was still teaching, but I was so tired. My body was so tired, the aches and the coughing. And then by that weekend, I started to lose my sense of taste and smell. Uh, I went and got tested again, and I came back positive on that Sunday, the next Sunday. So like a week later, I came back positive and, um, you know, started doing my paperwork for work. But I, I, had, to, I had to cancel like two performances um, because that next week I just, I couldn't talk because this, th that disease, it really attacks your respiratory and it takes so much air to speak. And during that time, you know, I, I sat quiet, you know, I would post things here and there, but you know, I just took a lot of supplements, um, the vitamin D, the vitamin C, the echinacea, aspragalus and um, olive, olive leaf oil. Olive leaf, right. Yeah. Those are the things I took for my immunity and, uh, then as God has led me to tell certain people about uh, the things I took within three to four days, they come back and tell me that they have it. And it's crazy. Uh, but I just listen to my spirit and I just start talking to people whenever I feel. And then they're like, I'm sick. A few days later, they tell me they're sick. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm glad that I gave you, you know, these things that you can take. And anybody who wants to know, I'll tell you what I took. But it was based on um, this doctor that my, my sister spoke to during that time. But yeah, it was rough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very hard. Well, I'm really, I'm really, really, really glad that you beat it. Thank and, you. Um, and, and I think um, the, the, the um, supplements that you took too are, are things that um, um, are most of them, all of them are things that, that have go way, way, way back, way back yeah. in terms of um, um, people knowing that they're good for you and that they will help you um, fight yeah. off um, uh viruses specifically but this and of course um vitamin d is uh, one of our best friends in the world anyway because it's also mm -hmm. an antidepressant so and at this point when we're stuck so much inside we need a lot of antidepressants so yeah and we got to walk around um and, and it hurts and it it scares you because at first you can't breathe and then you can't you start having a panic attack because you can't breathe <sighs> and that makes it worse and then you're hyperventilating. And I had many spells of hyperventilation during mm. those few days of being mm. sick. Uh, and it was weird because that was right when the video started to air and I'm like up there, do it for you. But I'm like at home, like, <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, I felt like such a hypocrite. <laughs> and I was, it was funny because I was in a city council meeting with, with the mayor and council people, and they're asking me um, questions. And I was sitting there with COVID-19 in the middle of a council meeting at my house in a Zoom. And you know, at that time I hadn't been got gotten the diagnosis, but it was it was crazy that I was sitting up there and then I had to go on Fox News and interview and they told me that they were gonna ask me if COVID had personally affected my life. Um and I was like, I'm just gonna tell the truth. And I think the hardest part for me wasn't the fact that I was battling it. It was the fact that my sister, I know I gave it to my sister because we live in a house together. You know, my sister's my roommate. And you know, I didn't have enough time to quarantine and isolate because within two days of me starting to cough and stuff, she started coughing and, and stuff like that and exhibiting the symptoms. And so it was really rough because I was still testing negative at the time that I passed it to her, you know, so how would I know? And, you know, you don't want to see anyone that you love, let alone yourself go through this. And it really takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of prayer and faith and hope and, um, you know, doing what you can staying on top of because you're just tired and all you want to do is sleep. That's all you want to do. And there's that. How's she, how is she? She's good. We're both okay. good. You know, okay. we got over it okay. in November. We tested negative. We've been good. You know, I don't know how long our little aunt antibodies are going to work but you know now with the conversation that we're all having with each other is are we taking the vaccine or not right. Um, right and they say moderna is better for people who have had it already but you know all of us it's it's just kind of like looking to see watching the people who you know may have gotten and watching you know those who say they've gotten it or have gotten it on television or whatever and figuring out what we're going to do yeah for real well, I, I, that it brings us to one of the one of the questions from Crystal Darby in the Q and A is, what's next for our poet laureate? Well, I'm in the process of working on an album. Uh, it's 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 centered around what I did with the mural with painting the streets. Um, it's called the Elevated EP. Uh, it'll be a mixture of spoken word, hip hop, and music. I'm gearing up for the Bad Mama Jamma remix, which will be at the Carver Community Center, um, called Carver Cultural Arts Center. Uh, it'll be March 20th of next year. I'm in the process of getting ready for Dream Week in the MLK March. Um, unfortunately, that stuff has to be pre-recorded because the season that we're in. So I've been doing shooting uh videos and footage for some of those things and um some of the stuff i can't say because it hasn't been they haven't made the announcement in the media but i'm a part of a, pu a public arts um uh celebration and artwork that that's about to be announced and i'm not the only poet involved in that but there's several great poets that are part of that public arts thing so it's a it's a lot of things coming yeah it is oh that's awesome that's awesome well well we're coming right up on the on the witching hour here. And so I, I can't believe it. This has just flown right by. <laughs> it's flown right by. Um, and we have five of your wonderful books to give away. And um, Susan, okay. if you can pull um, Amanda in, this is going to be kind of fun. Um, Amanda's got a wheel of names and she's going to spin the wheel of names and we're going to figure out who is getting those books and um, when they come into the Twig bookstore, I will bring them to you and um, uh, have you um, autograph them. We should meet down at the Pearl because it's beautiful oh, down yeah, there. That's true. That's you can true. meet outside and yeah, we, sign Absolutely. Us. That would be great. That would be great. Um, Crystal just said thanks for the answer. <laughs> she's she's going to be watching you know she will and she's um one of one of my wonderful board members hey thank you susan can you bring amanda in for the wheel spinning of the wheel, wheel. Yep, the wheel of fortune oh. <laughs> <laughs> we need a heart player <laughs> no, no, she, she's got it she's got it it's it's really cool where do you see this thing okay. it's, it's totally cool <laughs> i apologize i changed my name and it confused her so we're getting oh, it oh. <laughs> getting the screen share amanda went incognito here <sighs> and she's back amanda amanda is is uh, uh was a Nowcast uh, development director for many years, and even though she moved into different time zones. And <laughs> Susan, I need the screen share option. No one wants to look at me right now, I promise. 
<laughs> You're beautiful. What are you talking about? Aurelio Montemayor, you asked, is it harder to write poetry than prose? Uh, I would say, depending on the form that you pick, like something like haiku, super duper easy. Limericks, a little bit harder. Um, <laughs> you know, it just depends on the form that you choose because some form is based on iambic pentameter and syllable counts and stress on syllables. And those forms are not as easy to write um, as a prose to me. That comes easy, Smeezy, you know. Okay, Amanda, look at this wheel. <laughs> the winner is Sarah Grace. <laughs> Numero uno down, Sarah Grace. Congratulations, Sarah Grace. Crystal. Glenda. Oh, Glenda. Glenda. Okay. Go, Glenda. Go, Glenda. Tracy. Another Yay, board I member. Die. Crystal, it did with Crystal. <laughs> Yay, Crystal Dada! Last but not least. And Jim Eskin. Yay! Yay! Hey, I was about to think that wheel was sexist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for your time uh, and the, the treasure of your time and, and your words. It has been such a delightful night. I am very grateful. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be with you all. And this time it really did whiz by like, have we been here an hour? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but I love you all. And if you need me, um, hopefully you all have access to Facebook or, or Gmail because my email is vocab81 at gmail.com. That's vocab81, the year I was born, at gmail.com. You can email me. I want to be accessible to you and I will try to respond within a reasonable amount of days to anything that you might have for me. I love you all and you'll have a best safe, safe holiday experience. <laughs> Hi, I see you guys up there. Hey, you yeah, I want to see everybody. Can we cut on? Our, can we turn on our? Uh, can we turn on the camera? You we feel can, comfortable? I'll bet you share your screen so I can look at your pretty yeah, faces. Yeah, that would be great. I see Mifey. I see Mimi. I see Barbara Gerben Hawkins. I see Hi, Beth people. and Tracy and Crystal and Ann Larmy. Hello. And. Hi. Who have I missed? Rebecca Espinoza. And, and who else? Editor Wheelchair. Uh, Wheelchair? That's, <laughs> that's my sweet husband. Oh, hello, sweet husband. Hi, <laughs> and Susan Smiley, who's been driving. Hey, There's Susan. Hi, Miriam. Miriam. <laughs> Susan, who's been driving this whole time and made those wonderful videos come in. Hi, Miss Barbara. How are you? You look so pretty over there. Is that a piano behind you? Oh my God. It is, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, if I would have known, I would have been like, we could have had some piano earlier. <laughs> <laughs> How neat. Thank you, How beautiful neat. people. Thank you for letting me see your faces. It's so good to connect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If anybody wants to stay on for a second, I'll read you guys a poem because I oh, didn't read yes. not nary a poem. Oh, I'm you not didn't? Nary a <laughs> okay, okay. We will have a poem. If y'all want to stick around for it. I'm, I'm sticking around. Some poetry. 
because I'm a ham. Unfortunately, my mama birthed the ham and I, I, I own up to it. I fess up to it. You know what I'm saying? But it, I, I consider it a privilege and an honor to be here with you all and to share uh, my poetry. So this poem is an oldie but goodie. It's called Jazz That I Am. It is based on uh, the Harlem Renaissance era of, of American history because black history is American history. And it's about so many jazz artists that I happen to love. And I know that bebop and funk are two different types of jazz, but I say funk in the sense of style, not in the sense of funk jazz. Just so, cause I've had people argue me down. Why do you say funk? It's not funk, it's bebop. I know it's bebop, honey. I'm talking about funkiness, it's funky. <laughs> All right. I don't know if y'all can hear my snap or not. Got it. I be that saxophone. I be that trombone. I be that jazz song. My voice is a microphone phone. I am piano keys. My walk is a symphony. My heels click like a tambourine. Yeah, music is my everything. So give me jazz, jazz that I am. Give me jazz, jazz that I am. Give me jazz, jazz that I am. I, 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 I am jazz, yeah. Give me a Thelonious Monk kind of funk to smooth my wrinkled morning blues. Cruise down my memory banks with subdued bebop bruise melodies. Rain down my soul from the heavenlies. Fat, cold drops of precipitation. I think my flesh was awaiting its creation through cold train stained saxophone notes chained to clay and Adam's missing rib. And as Dizzy Gillespie caressed me, molded and shaped me to the sound of supple trumpet toots, the bravado of my heart began to shoot through the roof of my mouth and a jazzy, fat, nasty sound came spouting out. I let the pitch of it shout over Kenny Clark drum taps, having a musical spat with the rainbow in my smile. And for a while, I drowned my mind in the lines of an old Louis Armstrong song as a breath from his cheeks pushed me along and from then on I knew I belonged with Dexter Gordon great so follow me among the ranks with Charlie Parker and Johnny Hodges as their instrumental music massages my temples changing the tempo of my thoughts because lately I've been dwelling on Duke Ellington keystrokes mental images float off his elegance and with relevance promote my thought patterns to linger in limbo with Nina Simone as Cab Calloway echoes his resonance of a hidey 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 ho twirling in a yellow pinstripe zoot suit with matching hat to boot I tell you I am a recruit for a jazzy dream team so stream me through Doc Perry's piano pounding glean me in a montage of cool and Big band swing, whirl me on the surface of a melodic color scheme. Harlem mahoganies and Dutch DC chocolate browns catch me in this movement of symphonic sound and I will never come down from the very high found in my blood as a pump. So give me a Thelonious Monk kind of funk, a smooth black Billy Holiday groove, a luscious Lean a horn tune, a croon from Sarah Vaughn to spawn a mid-morning press for my bunchy blues. Cause I want to be smooth, so smooth as jazz is jazz. A renovated soul and innovative from old and inundated with cold drops of rain. Just as inflamed as they carnivorously drunk with this neoclassic Thelonious Monk kind of funk. So give it to me, live it through me, say it to me, play it through me. I am a vessel, a significant infant adolescent to eminent woman projecting and expressing this air inspired art form. My body performs it every minute minute of every passing day for decades. You can hear me jazz, woodwind percussion steering with discussion brass like is, baby I am, containing, becoming and being pizzazz and I have as much as with such class a thelonious monk, kind of funk, jazz, jazz, jazz. Yes, that I am, that you are. Thank you. Can you hear the applause? 
Yes, and I love you all. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you for giving me those extra minutes. <laughs> Thank you for taking them. Yeah, that is so kind of you. So kind of you. Thank you. You are giving me great hope. We're in Amazing. this together. We Amazing. are. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all be blessed and let's keep checking in on each other, checking with each other and keep ourselves community minded. Got it. You got ah. it. Thank you. My compliments to your mama. <laughs> I'll tell her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.